Show off your robot to thousands on the front page of Twitch. Submit your robot reveal video to Fun Premiere Night by going to tinyurl.com forward slash fun 2019 info to learn more. Um, Caltran over on Discord, he asked a lot of questions. So I'm going to hop into one for uh, that he had for 503. So he said, last season in 2018, across five district events, they received five different judge awards. Um, does Frog Force go into an event and tailor wow. their pit presentations to a specific award or do they just give the same presentation and let the judges take it as they will? No, uh, I don't know that there's a way to do that, except for some awards. You don't know what the judge, you know, the chairman's award, obviously, dean's list, the ones that are outside the pit and entrepreneurship. But uh, no, we just um, the kids just talk about what they're passionate about. The robotic judges come up and, and they um, uh, and, and they talk about that. They ask about programming, our programming kids jump in there and they just, uh, you know, we, we don't. We aim for one award, and it's not one that's given in the pit. <laughs> Unmute. Ah, sorry, my mute got stuck. Um, and Caltrain also wants to know for Coach Norm, over the last few years, Team 2468 never seems to fail to get a Dean's List finalist um, or 2018 Dean's List winner. So is there any special preparation process they put your that you put your candidates through, um, particularly for the interview? We uh, actually use our previous dean's finalists uh, or our dean's nominee students for that so they can uh, take and talk about the interview process. One of the things we also do for chairmans is we have a question bank of all the questions that have ever been asked of our chairman's team by judges. And we have a question bank by the students have been asked in their follow up questions by the judges and the dean's list. And so our students start to share those with each other. And then our students will sit down with previous dean's list winners uh, or our finalists and ask them and our previous uh, nominees will then act, act like they're the judge asking them the interview questions or interviewing them to prepare them for the, what they think might, they might be facing. That's a, uh, our, that's amazing. Um, the other I thing is, the other thing is, sorry, the other thing is our essay is not wit written by one person. Uh, we actually have multiple mentors, wordsmith on the essay, and then our dean's list semifinalists, our nominees from the previous year, do the final editing, editing of the essay uh, because they, we feel that they're classmates and they represent them better than we do. That's a really awesome process. And something that teams can go and do because it is the Dean's List submissions are due this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So there is still time to go ping your your previous year Dean's List nominees. That's right. So, so another user from Discord wants to know, and this is a question for every team here. Um, what does the process of creating a pick list look like for you? Let's start with Sarah. <laughs> Um, funnily enough, we were just talking about this last night. So I think our process is gonna this year look like a few, um, the lead scouting student, the lead strategy student and the lead scouting mentor are all going to sit down and come up with that uh, list. And then that's going to go to a wider sort of committee for confirmation. So sort of a two tier process in order to get us there. Obviously, that list will be influenced by some algorithms that the scouting team is currently creating. Yeah, we're trying to automate ours with our scouting app this this year. Um, it, it'll it'll produce nice graphs and visuals, so we uh, we target what we want, what we care about, hatch scoring or total piece scoring or climbs, and then it'll it'll give us a list of a ranked list of who's the best at at, at each task, and then whichever pick you're talking about, uh, whatever whatever robot you're looking for, you just pick the top of that list. Karthik, what about 11.14? What is, I'd be interested to know what the pick list process looks like. I mean, I think the pick list process for 11.14 is, um, it's uh, a lot more, it's a lot looser than I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people picture. Um, I think uh, one thing that's really important to remember is that we're dealing with super small sample sizes at events. You know, we're talking about like a uh, district event, you might be seeing a team only play seven or eight matches um, on that first day, and you're trying to make that list in that evening. So, um, as important as data-driven decision making is, it's important to look at the other factors behind the data. Because when you got a sample size that small, your decision should shouldn't only be based on that. So um, things to pay attention to are instead of just looking at raw averages, look at how consistent they were. Um, try and figure out why there were zeros. Is the team trending in an upward direction? Uh, that sort of stuff. But 
I think um, like if I was to give you like the simplest version of the process, it is um, put take put the teams into tiers and then rank within the tiers. So like it's you have a good idea of like who the top four teams at the event are. Take a look at that tier and then figure out within that top four and then pull in another the next group of four and then the next group and rank within those tiers. Mm -hmm. So. So we got a pretty good question from chat that is along the lines of scouting, but kind of a different approach. So they want to know, what do you think of live data updating scouting um, data sheets for the drive team to use before matches? So we have a lot of coaches on the show right now. So what do you guys think about that? I like it. I do too. Uh, I want to know what the team, the two people I'm playing with are going to do, and I want to know what they do best. The other opposing team does best, and I'm going to try to take away what they do best and try to capitalize on what we do best as an alliance. But so, I will say, if you're going to give the coach information like that at a glance, keep it super simple because they don't need to process mm -hmm. 8 billion things. Just go with what the most important things were. Like 2017 would be the best example. Just tell me how many gears the team <laughs> score on average. Give me an idea if they're consistent and how much should I trust their hang? If you just tell me those things, then we're good to go. Yeah, absolutely. I know in 125, um, we have a dedicated mentor and two students that runs around with them getting like the most basic, simple data for Brando before a match. Um, one of them, like one of the students goes and talks to the scouting team um, while the mentor, you know, double checks, okay, is, are their alliance partners, you know, functioning? Are our opponents functioning? And then the other student kind of gathers any other like observation data and then they go to them with that. So even if it's not like a, you know, a fancy like live update system of some sort, there's definitely ways to approach, you know, getting the drive team that information before a match. And we'll take one more of these questions before we move on. So Sarah, there were a lot of uh, questions for, for 3132. So Griffin from 6334, he's alumni. Wants to know um, what conflicts and solutions do you encounter with being an international team? <laughs> um, we need an entire show. Uh, <laughs> I think Karthik and I could go on for an hour, solid, just the two of us on this one. Um, I think, you know, just as we're talking about stuff on the show, I think, oh, that doesn't work for us because we're international. You know, the the issues are so wide and broad, it's hard to really bring it down to a 30 second answer. So everything from it's different power, we're dealing with we can't get the parts we need both here when we need an imperial part as well as when we go to competition and then we need a metric replacement. Um, shipping lead time, just getting to competition. I mean, we have to get there early for any competition on mainland because we need to get over jet lag. Um, how do you get all that stuff onto the plane? Um, is that enough for the moment? I can keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I can't even imagine trying to coordinate with that. Not to mention like getting that many high school students to, to like take such long plane trips. Um, well, it's, and it's, we're getting a, a new problem at the moment, especially um, as parents are worried about the kids' safety going there. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a lot to get through and visas because Australia, we don't need visas. It's visa waiver, but some of our kids are non-Australian citizens, so it, it's a whole mess. I yeah. could go on a long rant about the visa issues that um, Canadians now have getting into the U.S. Well, certain Canadians, because not all Canadians are treated equally at the U.S. border. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.